Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are on issue 12 of the Imperium magazine. Just gonna get an annoyance out to begin with. I keep putting my stuff in plastic mailing bags. And it is trashing the corners. Look at that. It's very annoying. Like, they're sending three to four issues at a time. Can't they put it in a box? But let's get into the review. Imperium Magazine, issue 12. Battle games in the 41st millennium. We tried to... This lovely image of the Necron Warriors awakening. This is old artwork, as you can see the gun. It has the uh, the rod as opposed to the little balls. Then inside we get free paints, Necron War Gear names, new paint guide, new rules for heroes in games. So the free paints we got. Got everybody's favourite, Agrag Agrax Earthshade. I mainly use this on the bases to darken it down once I've grayed them. My first ever bottle of pink. Screamer pink. Very interested. Actually, hang on. That's a pretty dark pink. It's very nice though. Just need to work out what I'm going to do. And then finally, Canoptic uh, Alloy. I nearly said a lot. Canoptic uh, Alloy. Oh my god. Try it one more time. Canoptic Alloy is the third and final colour. Big old air bubble in there. Kind of judging by the colours. A brownish, burnished gold. Right, let's get into the magazine. Pretty excited because I'm hoping these new rules for heroes in games are actually going to be something decent. Alright, what do we get? We get Necron Weapons and War Gear, the Imperium Nihilus, Chapter Planets, Chaos Demons, the Space Marine and Necron Painting Guide, and then Defending the Crypts. Uh, first, Necrons Weaponin. And war gear names. The classic uh, codex cover. And then. Okay, so this is just going to be D33 charts. If you want to give weapons some names, which I don't really see the point of. So range weapons, melee weapons. Uh, Random war gear. Oh, that's disappointing. I don't know what it was going to be, but that doesn't particularly interest me. The Imperium Nihilus. I hope I'm saying that right. The Imperium Nihilus lies beyond the rolling warp storms that make up the Great Rift. Cut off from terror and the blind to the Astronomicon's light. Those who dwell here face a legion of nightmarish foes. Very classic Abaddon artwork. And like random Black Legion guys. There's a Corn Berserker one. Goes a little into the background of the war zone. Just just one page. Again, a little bit disappointing. Talks a little bit about the worlds that are out there on their own. The gauntlet, which is the stable passages between one side and the other. And weirdly a little bit about Commander Dante. Blood Angel Chapter, Chapter Master. Comes from Planet Bow, which lies in this section of space. He is named Regent of the Imperium by Ruboot Gilliman. Dante is now responsible for commanding all Imperial forces in this region of the galaxy. He has sworn to purge the Imperium of Chaos. Up next is the Chapter Planets, which is a nice bit of fluff, a beautiful artwork. These are one of the new Primaris chapters. 
the Storm Reapers. Nice silver armor. Goes a little bit into them. Now there's like the fortress monasteries. So this is the Howling Griffins. And then we also have the fleet base chapters, which look pretty cool. And we get a little bit about Chaos Demons. Inquisitor reports on them once again. Stunning artwork. The Nurgle gods with some blood letters. Some screamers of Steech. Anything's on. Oh, there they are. I was about to say I've not seen any Slanesh, but they're represented. Talks a bit about the gods that we all know and love. Really great artwork, though. There's Corn, Nurgle, Sneech, Slanesh. Then it talks a bit about shades, slapping it on the rocks to make them look a little darker. Doing the rocks. They use the pink. Oh, here we go. Using it for his uh, wax seals. Very interesting. Wouldn't be my first point. And they show you how the figures should be looking by now. Go into. The Necrons, using the shades and highlighting some areas with the new paints. And how they should look. And then finally, the Battle Report, defending the crypt. And for that, we will be right back. And we are back, defending the crypts. The Necron Overlord has risen from his slumber and gained control of his forces. However, his crypt complex remains under siege. He accompanies his phalaxes of Necron warriors as they stalk the corridors, hunting down intruders. A very simple mission. Basically, the Necrons want to kill the Space Marines and behead the Space Marine chapter. And the Space Marines want to do the exact same. So it's kill everyone. For this mission, we need the small mat, dice, range rulers, wound markers, all off to the side. And then that is it. So for this mission, we're going to have the Necron Overlord. We all know and love. He starts up here. And then we get five Necron Warriors with gas flyers. Who set up roughly along here. Dropping them everywhere. Something like that. Then on the other side, we have the Primaris Captain, who hasn't had much success. He's done better than the Lieutenant. I am enjoying painting the Space Marines, and I'm really enjoying painting the Necrons. I'm actually enjoying it more than I honestly thought I would. The Captain starts down here, and he is joined by the three assault intercessors that we've not seen for a while but they're back and they basically just stand in a line boop, boop, boop. So that is set up we then have the data sheet we get the character keyword is the new section it's not as exciting as i hoped i think we are going to learn heroic intervention so we'll keep that handy off to the side here and then we are in to the gameplay mm -hmm. Bring the Necron Lord down. There we go, that's a bit better. Right, turn one goes to the Necrons. Necrons may move and shoot if they want to. Helps if I read the correct page first. Space Marines can move and then shoot. They can also charge. So we're only going to worry about moving forward because they are going to move, shoot, and charge. So the Primaris Captain can go six inches. Which is quite nice and easy. That will put him pretty much at the center line. Heroically leading the way. And his assault and assessors can do the exact same. Pretty straightforward movement phase. We then go into the shooting. Now everybody has... Primaris Captain has a 12 inch plasma pistol. The heavy bolt pistols are all 18 inches, so everyone can shoot. 
I cannot target the Necron Lord. Because we're learning in this game about the lookout server, which means as long as he's within three inches of a friendly unit, he cannot be targeted. Boing. So he is currently comfortably next to this guy. So as long as that guy survives, Necron Lord cannot be targeted. So on to the shooting phase, the Primaris Captain, he is firing his plasma pistol, he needs a 2 up to hit, with 4 he has hit, it is strength 7 versus toughness of 4, so it's not double, because if it was double he'd need a 2 to wound, but it is greater, so freeze the wound, on a 4 he has wounded, his damage 1, AP minus, minus 3, ooh, Necron Warrior has a 4 up save, minus 3 means I'd need to roll a 7 which is impossible, so he has killed a Necron. <laughs> then his Assault Intercessors next to him are all gonna fire, they also have a pistol, hitting on freeze. And they all missed. I, ugh. Good, good work there, lads. Good work. Right, the charge phase. How to charge? You do your normal charge. Heroic intervention. When the player whose turn it is has charged with all eligible units, the opponent may select a character who can then heroically intervene. In the example, everybody's charging into the Necron Warriors, so we'll do the same. Captain, with a heroic six inches, he is going to make it close, because technically he should be there, so six inches, he is in, could have also, if I was really worried, go that way, so we're just going a straight line, so he's in, the assault marines, they better make it in. 10. Okay, they've made it comfortably. So this guy can get all the way in, and the rest can all jump in as well. We'll do something like that. Then heroic intervention happens, so the Necron Lord can move up to 3 inches towards the combat. He is just going to swing in this way. And now everybody is in combat. So as the Space Marines charged, they get to fight first. So let's do the Primaris Captain, because I feel he's going to do the most damage. He has, on the charge, five attack. He has a power sword that does nothing apart from giving plus one strength and minus three AP. So he is hidden on twos. And of course one misses. With his plus one to his strength, that makes him strength five versus toughness four, so he is greater. Every three that this rolls, he is going to kill someone. Freeze the wound. One, two, three. He has just slaughtered the unit. One warrior left. Now the intercessor's turn. They can move up to three inches if they're not in combat. So they're gonna do that. Two will go on the Necron Warrior, and the third guy will go on to the Overlord. Each intercessor has two attacks. So the two on the Necron Warrior. This feels a little overkill, but it has to go towards the closest enemy model. So he has or they have. Chainsword. Each time the bearer fights, it makes an additional attack. So, two more attacks. Six attacks on this one lone warrior. Hitting on freeze. Well, the two extra attacks did nothing for him. Four hits. It is strength of the user, minus one armor penetration. So strength four, toughness four, force the wound. Three wounds. It is minus one AP, so fives will save him. 
if we get three fives or fives and sixes, I'm gonna just declare the Necrons winners. No, nope. he died hideously. So the Necron warriors are defeated. Just the Overlord left, and we have the third intercessor. So base attacks too. Chainsword gives them an extra attack. Hit and freeze. Scores two hits. He is strength four. No, yeah, strength four. Versus toughness five. So he is less. So he needs fives to wound. <gasps> Double wound. Minus one on the AP, so the Necron Overlord's save is now going to be a four plus save. Saves one, loses a wound. Boop. This is pretty much how the magazine described it going down. In the magazine, let me just show you. Necron Warriors get slaughtered. They lost one to shooting like they did in another game. And the Space Marines kill all of them and inflict a wound on the Overlord. Now the Overlord gets the fight back. The Overlord is deadly. So he has four attacks. He is minus one to hit. So he needs freeze to hit. Scores three hits. Strength times two. He is now strength 10 versus toughness 4, meaning he needs 2s to wound. For every 2, that's a dead space marine. He has just wiped the unit on his own. Which, <laughs> believe it or not, is exactly what happens in the rulebook. Hilarious, we are just doing it as the rules state. Necrons. Turn one, we're just left with HQs. So first thing to do, Necrons get the living metal rule. So he regains a wound. So Necron Lord is back up to full health. He also doesn't have any close combat weapons, so he's gonna move a little bit closer. Just so he can't fail the charge. And that's his charge. So he has charged in, meaning the Necron gets the swing first. He has a base of four attacks. Hidden Humphreys. Misses one. Strength ten versus toughness four. He is wounding on twos. Only two wounds. Dun dun dun. He is AP minus four, which means the Primaris Captain would not get a save normally. But the Primaris Captain does have is Iron Halo, which gives them a 4 plus in Vulnerable. There we go, that's a bit more fun. So, we, uh, two wounds. He needs fours to save. Got a five on one, and a one on the other. Meaning, he has just took three wounds. But now it's his turn to swing back. He has five attacks. Hitting on twos. He missed with one. Now he is strength four. But the power sword makes him strength five. The overlord is toughness five. So space marine needs fours to wound. And he does two. Ooh, but it is minus three. So six is the save. No saves. So the Necron Lord has just took four wounds. Where is the Space Marines go? So we're locked in combat. Can't oh, he has a pistol, so he can shoot in close range. So he gets the one shot, hitting on twos, and rolls the six. It is strength seven. So he needs freeze to wound. He does wound. Minus three, the Necron Lord needs a six to save. Necron Lord does not save, so he's took another wound. Oh, and that's it. Necron Lord has taken five wounds. He only has five in total. Meaning, we have a Space Marine victory. 
invulnerable save has saved the space marines well that was a fun little game uh, i believe the next issue comes with five assault intercessors so i need to get them painted up before we can move along then after that we get the uh, cargo crate so the first set of terrain which will be fun to use and then I think we get flayed ones after that. There's a lot coming. These packs just keep coming. It's like they're almost monthly. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you give me a subscribe. And uh, till next week, play more Warhammer. Yeah.